In this presentation, Dr. Sutton, National Scrapie Program Coordinator, provides information about progress in the fight to eradicate scrapie in the United States during 2016. The American Goat Federation, AGF, was organized as a non-profit national association in 2010 to represent the interests of all organizations and producers engaged in the production and marketing of goat milk, meat, fiber, pack goat, and grazing services across the United States. All right, so good news. No new scrapie cases this fiscal year. The last scrape, classical scrapie case was back in April of last year, so we're nine months without a classical case. We did have a NOR 98-like case late in uh, fiscal year 16. This shows you our infected flocks over time. As you know, the, the accelerated eradication program began in, began in FY 2002. In the couple of years following that, we ramped up surveillance significantly at slaughter, and that's why you see the large peak in the number of infected flocks and herds identified in FY 2005, and then we've been on a downslope ever since, with only having a few infected herds and flocks last year, and no new classical herds this year. So what do I know about goats and scrapie? These are the breeds and crosses in which we've identified scrapie-infected goats in the United States. Alpines, Angora, Boar, Nigerian Dwarf, Nubian, Sayanin, Toggenberg Cross, and a multitude of other crosses where the breed was not really known. So why eradicate scrapie and goats? In FY 2011, we had more field cases in goats than we did in sheep. Set between FY 13 and 16, we had identified four infected goat herds. So how common in goats? It's still very rare in goats. We believe that the rate is somewhere around 0.002%. However, the confidence of our measure is limited because we've only tested a little over 40,000 goats at slaughter and had one positive. So we know it's somewhere around 1 in 40,000, maybe less, maybe a little more. And so this gives you the comparison between the prevalence in sheep versus the prevalence in goats. As you can see in goats, the prevalence is, as I mentioned, 0.002%, and in sheep it's 0.001%. But you have to understand that the confidence of that measure is only 0.009 for sheep and 0.004 for goats. And the goat one is a little bit iffy because we're using all the goats ever tested to give that number as opposed to an annual measure that we're using for sheep. So it's critical that we look for scrapie both in sheep and goats in order to get to zero cases, which is the goal that will really make a difference in terms of our ability to trade internationally. This map shows you all the cases that we've had since the beginning of the accelerated eradication program in goats. The colors let you know how recent those cases were. So the more blue-purple you get, the older the case is. So I'll let you all study on that for just a second. This shows you all sheep and goat scrapie cases by fiscal year since the start of the accelerated program in 2002. As you can see, goats make up a relatively small percent, but as we've had success with the eradication in sheep, the relative concentration in goats has increased. This slide shows you the most recent year so you can get a better look at what's happening. As you can see, the red is the goats and the blue is the sheep, and the percentage being made up by goats is increasing relative to that in sheep. This shows you our current two infected uh, flocks that have not been cleaned up yet. The one in Colorado is an old infected goat herd who determined that he wished to uh, continue to home slaughter his animals and remain on quarantine. And the one in Texas is just waiting C and D. 
Let's just clean the disinfection. This shows you the relative percentage of animals collected on farm and at slaughter and the relative number between sheep and goats. So we're, as you know, there's about a third as many goats as there are sheep. And so on farm, we're coming out at about the correct proportion. At slaughter, we're still undersampling goats. This shows you the overall trends in slaughter surveillance over time for the last four fiscal years with the purplish red one being the current fiscal year and that's why it only goes for a few months. As you can see we are doing a little better this year in our collections than we did last year. Last year we just barely bet our overall sampling minimum for the, the nation as a whole at just over 40,000. This shows the breakdown between sheep and goats and the face colors that were sampled. That's slaughter. So we've color coded it to sort of match the color of the sheep. The black ones are the black faced. The model faced are the sort of grayish ones. And the, the lighter color they were, the more white it gets as you go up. And then the goats are the light blue at the top. And the ones that were unknown at time of collection, um, which kind of sheep they were, for example, hair sheep or uh, gray face sheep or red face sheep are all lumped into that dark blue category at the top. As you can see, over the last several years, we've been increasing the number of ghosts that we've been sampling. This shows you how we're doing on a state-by-state -state basis. We utilize the ear tag state identifier to dis determine which state animals come from when they're sampled either at slaughter or on farm. So this is how we did for FY16 and the little map in the corner shows you how we did in FY15 so you can compare the overall progress. As you can see we did make some progress in Arizona and New Mexico and a few other states. A few went back a little bit but for the most part we all, it was all forward movement despite our overall reduction in overall sampling. This is for sheep and this one is for goats. The maps are set up in the same way. The big map is FY16 and the small map is FY15 for comparison. As you can see, we did have some improvement in some of our lower performing states from FY15 with Florida getting into the blue. Anything that's dark blue, about 100%. Anything in the lighter blue, somewhere in that 81% uh, or better. So overall, we're doing pretty good in making our state sampling minimums, but we still have a ways to go in a few places. So in conclusion, as I say each year, it all comes down to the help that the industry gives us in reporting suspect animals and in helping us meet our sampling goals, particularly for on farm deads. The highest value surveilled sample is an animal showing neurologic signs that's over the age of 12 months. So we really, really need to encourage producers to call our offices and let us know that these animals exist and have us come out and sample them. Uh, when we first started the program, nearly, let's say about 80% of the animals that were reported to us were actually straight and positive. Now that number is trending down to where yeah, we're seeing probably 10% of those actually positive, and that's because of the reducing prevalence. But that's still the biggest bang for our buck in terms of our surveillance dollar. The American Goat Federation, AGF, is a nonprofit national association that represents the interests of more than 200 organizations and thousands of producers engaged in the sustainable production and marketing of goat milk, meat, fiber, and grazing services across the United States. This video was produced as part of the educational services of AGF. AGF also supports research projects that will benefit the goat industry by writing letters to accompany grant requests and providing information when requested. The Board of Directors is made up of representatives of member organizations, individual producers, and industry specialists from all parts of the United States. Director candidates are nominated and serve three-year terms on the board. AGF is headquartered in West Lafayette, Indiana, 
and open from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Visit our website, AmericanGoatFederation.org, where you will find information about goat management, health care, and other resources. While you're on the website, become a member of AGF and help us provide information to goat owners and represent all goat producers by providing information about our concerns and industry needs to government agencies, USDA, and researchers.